Hello YouTube and welcome to What The Math. Today our job is to turn from yet another planet and we're going to focus on Mars this time. So Mars is right here. This is, oh, by the way, this is Universe Sandbox 2. This is an alpha version uh, and this is a super fastly spinning Mars. So I'm going to slow it down a little bit, zoom into it and let's see what we have to deal with. So we're going to try to turn this into an Earth-like planet. In other words, we're going to terraform it. Uh, so what is the problem with Mars? Why does it not look like Earth? Well, one major problem with Mars is that it's actually it actually lost all of its atmosphere over the years over millions and millions of years it its atmosphere escaped into the outer space and why? Well, because its mass is actually very low. Its mass is so low that most of the gases escaped uh, its atmosphere and basically are flying around somewhere in there possibly even uh, got to Earth at some point uh, and so what it really lacks is gravity. It needs more gravity, but unfortunately we can't really do this. Um, we can't really give it more gravity. We can't really give it more mass unless we collapse something really big with it. And that's something that I don't think we'll be able to do for many, many, many years. Now we can, however, create new atmosphere. So we can try to create new atmosphere and then hope for the best. Um, so if we actually create atmosphere with using some heavy elements, or um, uh, gases that are a little bit heavier than oxygen, a little bit heavier than hydrogen, uh, they can possibly stay um, on the surface and not fly into the outer space. So they might actually have enough mass of their own to kind of stick to the uh, uh, lower atmosphere and not uh, escape into the other at atmosphere. In a nutshell, if we can advance our chemical knowledge to create different various elements that have exactly the same function as oxygen, and CO2 and other gases, we can maybe create organic elements that are still gases and can survive on Mars and basically create enough atmosphere for it to support life. Now, uh, let's look at what we have to work with here. First of all, Mars is really cold. It, its average temperature is minus 66 degrees Celsius. That's relatively cold for life to survive, for water to develop and basically for, um, for it to look like a terrestrial planet, it needs to be a little bit warmer. Now, why is it so cold? Well, one, one reason, one main reason is because it has no atmosphere. Once again, it has no atmosphere, so there's no greenhouse effect and there's no way for it to get warmer. So there are two ways we can make it warmer. One way for us to make it warmer is to basically decrease its albedo. And if we look at its albedo, it's already pretty low. It's at 0.25, so the planet is already pretty dark. So making it even darker would be very, very difficult. So the other way we can increase um, its temperature is by basically somehow creating atmosphere. So let's just imagine that we are able to land some uh, really complicated machinery on the planet that starts to produce huge amount of greenhouse gases. So essentially we're, we're going to try to do what we're doing on Earth right now. In other words, release massive amounts of greenhouse gases, but on industrial levels and across the entire planet of Mars. So let's just increase our atmospheric mass right here. We're going to make it at least 2 times 10 to the power of 18, which is... Okay, maybe it's a little bit too much. I'm going to play around with this number a little bit until I get greenhouse effect of about 80 degrees. This is actually double what we have on Earth, even more than double. Now to make this more Earth-like, we need to obviously have liquid water. Unfortunately, the planet is still too cold to support liquid water, but we do have enough pressure. So this is enough pressure to, to create liquid water, but still not enough temperature. The temperature is actually really cold. But at this point, we've actually created enough atmosphere. So this is after our machines finished working, we released a lot, a lot of gases into the atmosphere. So why is it that it's still so cold? There should be enough greenhouse effect. There should be enough temperature. Well, it's because this actually is a really long process. Um, and this is what we're actually noticing on Earth right now. Even though there's so many greenhouse gases in, in our atmosphere, um, the temperature changes will take years. It will take so many years to actually have an effect on our planet. And unfortunately for us, it's, um, it's decades later that we'll actually start noticing these huge dramatic changes in atmospheric uh, temperature. So here, if I start advancing, if I'm going to advance my time, let's just say we're going to advance um, a few years. We're going to start advancing a few years, so this is a year later, almost a year later. And you can see that slowly the temperature will start uh, increasing. 0.1 degree per about half a year. 
no, maybe a little bit faster. So it's about 0.5 degrees per, per about a year. And so years later, maybe even decades later, the temperature of Mars will actually be able to support water. So I'm going to advance this many, 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 many years and see how long it takes us to get to approximately zero degrees because we need at least zero degrees before we can actually um, start introducing water. All right, so we now have just above zero degrees and it took us 120 years to get here. Now you can see the greenhouse effect actually fluctuates quite a lot depending on the season. And this is, you know, in the winter and, and summer is obviously different. Um, but the temperature is still increasing a little bit. It's, it's going to stabilize somewhere around, I think maybe five or 10 degrees. And uh, this is actually really good to have um, for, for basically for a stable climate, for, um, for, you know, the planet that is not going to be too cold or too warm and to have liquid water. So we're going to pause this here. This is actually enough for us. So after 140 years, we finally have a climate that is able to um, climate and also atmosphere and atmospheric pressure that is able to support water and essentially turn this into a, a Earth-like planet. So um, we don't actually see any clouds yet because we don't have any water, but we'll just say that uh, that we actually are able to melt the um, water ice that is actually on Mars and to release it into the atmosphere so that it creates clouds. So I'm going to do this by adding a bit of water with the dispersal tool. And here we go. Here's some water. And there you go. First clouds appear. So uh, Mars is now officially an uh, Earth-like planet. We still need some water. So I'm going to keep adding water until it starts getting some lakes and rivers. And there's our first lake right there. And look at that. It's turning beautiful as we speak. Unfortunately, you won't really see any greenery here because this game doesn't unfortunately simulate uh, the life on on the planet, but as you can see, it's turning beautiful. It's turning into a world full of oceans and and clouds. So this is already an Earth-like planet. So terraforming is technically complete. The temperature is about six degrees. It might actually go a little bit higher because our um, greenhouse effect here is a little bit higher than on Earth. It's actually quite much higher than on Earth because uh, we introduced um, a lot of atmospheric mass and um, our albedo is actually lower. But the planet is smaller, so it doesn't, and it's also farther away from the sun, so it doesn't absorb as much sunlight. But you can see we have some rivers here, there is a lake here, and there's a lot more, oh, and we even have um, ice caps in, in the North Pole. But um, we have like a really, really big ocean in the North, but almost, almost nothing in the South, because the Southern part of Mars is actually much higher than, than the Northern part. And uh, the biggest volcano in the, war in, in the solar system is actually um, uh, somewhere, I'm, I'm trying to find it, I'm trying to locate it. It's somewhere on the, north, on the southern side and it's, uh, it's called Olympus Mount, Olympus Mountain. It's very, 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 very high. It's the highest mountain in the solar system. And I, I wonder if this is it actually, it might be this. But we can add some more water just to see what it what will look like if it's actually, if it has even more, more surface water. Just a little bit more. Let's give it some more rivers, some more lakes, and that's that's that looks pretty good. We have a river right here. We have a river right there. So this is basically terraform Mars right here. And so how do we achieve this? Well, it was a two-step process. Step number one is essentially release huge amounts of gas into the into its atmosphere, but gas that is heavy enough for Mars to kind of attract with its very little gravity. Uh, these gases have to be engineered specifically for Martian atmosphere because if it's if it's lighter gases like oxygen and, and CO2, chances are after um, thousands, millions of years, they might again escape. Now, obviously, this might be enough for us to kind of survive for a few thousand years, but unfortunately, if we're going to terraform this planet, we might as well do it permanently. The other thing we needed to do is melt its water to introduce um, lakes and ice. And we also needed to increase its temperature, but we did that by introducing atmosphere and creating a greenhouse effect. We didn't really touch albedo at all, which is actually something that we did for Mercury. But here, Mars already has dark enough atmosphere that we might actually be able to um, not even affect its albedo uh, and get enough temperature that we need. Um, one thing is that Mars is also um, full of oxygen and it's actually trapped in, in its red color. The red color for, in, on Mars is from the um, iron oxide that basically basically rusted metal. 
So there's a lot of iron on the surface and a lot of oxygen that can also be released to create an um, atmosphere that's full of oxygen. You know, essentially we can create atmosphere that we can, um, you know, breathe on and this can be achieved by releasing all this oxide from the iron on the planet which will probably change its color making it a little bit more green and brown or actually i don't even know what color it will be it's just going to be a different color and so that means that its albedo will change and most likely increase uh to i don't know 0 0.3 0 0.39 just like on earth all right so this is terraform mars and next time we're going to look at venus and terraform it as well Thank you for watching, this has been What the Math with Universe Sandbox 2. Good luck to you, bye bye. Oh, but before I finish, let's just smack something into it like we did with Mercury. Just for fun. Just to just to see what happens if we take a really big object, like for example, uh let's just use I don't know, a planet maybe. Let's actually use Mercury and smack it right into our Mars and make it super cool. Oh no, look at that. Alright, so Mars has officially increased its temperature to almost 8,000 degrees Kelvin or um, 7,500 Celsius and it's spinning in the other direction. It's super, super hot, but it increased its mass to 13.2 that of a moon. I'm gonna advance this until Mars comes back to being a terrestrial planet and you can just watch it transform back into terrestrial planet. Thank you for watching. Bye bye. Thank you.